Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz, your local office supplies specialist, now open for business. Cameron Slater from Whale Oil and editor of Truth is Back with us. Hello, Cam. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. And uh, we have Josie Pagani. Hello, Josie. Hello. This one's to you, Josie. The car park tax is not going to happen. I suppose we could call it the government cutting their losses on this. What do you see? Yes, we could get rid of all our um, driving cliches, couldn't we? They were asleep at the wheel on this one. They kicked the tyres over the weekend, and now they've hit the brakes and done a wheel spin. Uh, I, I just think they've realised this is incredibly unpopular. Uh, it's a bit like running the country with those chance cards on Monopoly. You know those weird taxes you get, like, you know, you've, you owe building fees, go straight to jail or something. It's a bunch of silly little things uh, the laptop tax or the iPad tax or whatever it is is the next one coming up. None of these things are going to save the New Zealand economy. It's just stupid. Uh, and, and where's the big idea? Where's, if, if their big idea was to cut taxes, they seem to be doing the opposite with by, you know, death by a thousand scratches. If they really believed that cutting taxes was going to save the economy, why on earth aren't they doing that? All they're doing is constantly increasing little silly taxes. Cameron, they tried to mount an argument for fairness and balance over this tax, but uh, they could see the flack and there was more coming and it just wasn't worth pursuing. Well, it wasn't worth pursuing. There was a, a very good little campaign um, run by a number of people out there, um, save David Farrer, who valiantly tried to run Bill English's lines for a few days until he gave up this morning. Uh, but it's a silly tax. It should never have been contemplated. It was uh, discriminatory as well for people who work in Auckland and Wellington. And now we've got to get rid of the cell phone um, The cell phone tax and the iPad tax, as Josie said. And the other thing, the most iniquitous of all, is the um, you know the the tax for sleeping um, temporary shelters in Christchurch right. for workers who are down there fixing I'll tell you up. what's interesting, though. Um, I was listening to your interview with Peter Dunn, Larry, and this whole line they're running today that, in principle, they still stick to this principle that you should tax non-cash benefits as much as you should tax cash. Well, if you're going to follow that to its logical conclusion, surely the government should now come out and say they support a capital gains tax, which is a tax on mm. capital gains. Well, I think so. they should crack down on people with offshore accounts like they promised in 2011. Well, that's right. I mean, the other thing, though, if you can... <laughs> what are you leading to there, Cam? <laughs> yeah, God, Cam, you're becoming positively socialist. No, oh, no, absolutely. Look, in 2011, the IRD put out a press statement saying that they wanted to capture more tax residents who may have taxable offshore income held in offshore bank accounts. And what we've got today is David Shearer admitting to to, um, oh, to everybody that he's got go. 50 grand or more. Did, did, you, not see, he forgot did you not see that one coming, Josie? I, I, did, could, well, no, I, didn't, I could I'm see it a mile away. But hold on, close. in fairness uh, to, to Mr Shearer, um, we don't know, I imagine, that he would be paying tax on that, Cameron. We, you know, Well, uh, if he's declared it to the IRD yeah. and he's completed a tax return, right. and there may be some grey areas here because he might have been offshore for 10 years and there's an exemption for them, um, but let's say he has declared it to IRD, how can he now claim that he has forgotten about this? But you're incorrigible, Cam, that you've managed to get a discussion on a government <laughs> that's taxing the hell out of us, <laughs> little marbles, uh, onto David Shear and attack on the Labour Party. Oh, that's very good. Thing, Josie. Well, if I may say so, so Josie, if I may say so, and we've got Mr Shearer after six, and we'll put that... Um, that uh, bank account to him, but uh, uh, he told me last week that he, he wouldn't repeal the car park tax, he would look at it, Josie. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that, you've got to start coming out and saying clearly what you are going to do and what you're not yeah. going to do, and the same with buying back the assets, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just seems to me that, that this is yet again another example of just a complete lack of a good idea coming from the government. No matter what you think about uh, this car park tax, it's just, it's just so petty. All of these ideas are, you know, taking us nowhere. Uh, we'll come back in just a moment. Josie Pagani and Cam Slater on The Huddle. It's now 16 to 6. Larry Williams Drive. Back on the huddle with Cam Slater and Josie Pagani. This one to you first, uh, Cameron. Uh, we have the Education Minister, Hekia Parata, coming under the spotlight once again. Apparently the Minister's former staffers, or one of them, has taken a personal grievance case against uh, ministerial services. I must say she does seem to lose staff over and above the norm. What do you see in this? Well, this has been happening for quite some time. Uh, I understand that um, this case relates back to prior to Christmas, and I think I blogged on it at the time that this was coming down the pipeline. 
Uh, Hikia does have a revolving door policy, it seems, of um, convenient staffers to blame for stuff-ups. And there are a couple of other ministers that are in the same category. What usually happens, though, is ministerial services forbids them from hiring their own staff and takes over the control of that. But notwithstanding that, I understand she's very difficult to work with. Um, and uh, this is really just a culmination. Of course, you've got the, um, the unions and all the teachers up in arms again today because apparently a computer system is now able to sack Staff, and it's just a massive beat up, which oh, is complete. No, rubbish. but this is, I mean, it's just getting ridiculous. Nova Pay is just the sort of coronation street of scandal. Well, no, won't go just, away. They're just making they, stuff come up on, now, first of all, they Well, hold on, hold on. Let's, uh, look, payroll systems don't sack people. Uh, look, no, but it's a mess. It, but it's a mess, and it's only a matter of time till it. Uh, yeah. till it all falls over. I think, look, Josie, what about Hekia Parata? Yeah, I, uh, look, I agree. I'm a bit queasy about um, this issue of her staff and her office, only because I've worked in a minister's office and you just don't know what's going on when a personal grievance is taken. Uh, and, and while I think she's been a disaster of a minister for, for all the reasons we've discussed on this show many times, and not least her lack of oversight over the Novapay um, scandals, but, you know, to, to start sort of thinking, well, therefore, uh, what goes on in the office is also a reflection of her as a terrible minister. I just, I'm just a bit queasy about that. I think we have to be careful about getting into personal grievance stuff. But mm. honestly, that Novapay thing today, Larry, Jesus, who'd be a teacher under national? This is, who's well, for your underpaid? Teacher, just whinging, carping, whining. Oh, well, no, let's just get rid of them all. In fact, yeah. I think that's what's happening. I'm beginning to think maybe Novapay's a massive conspiracy. No, so let's get rid of all the teachers. Today's effort's a massive, stupid beat-up. Well, ridiculous. how would you feel if you got, if you got a termination? You're not con getting your contract terminated. terminated. You, you, well, come on, Josie. It's <laughs> not Josie. very nice, is it? Oh, diddums. These teachers are... Dear shocked. editor of Truth, you're terminated. Oh, Sorry. All right, let's go, uh, Josie, to number three, the drought and the farmers. There has been some commentary that farmers should be treated as any other business, meaning that they don't get taxpayer support. I agree with that, but it looks like that is the case. Uh, they're able to get the dole, and it's means-tested, so they're treated the same as everybody else. What do yeah, you see? And, and so is a small business, actually. I mean, you look at the businesses in Christchurch. They had uh, a, a special benefit kicked in straight after the earthquake. The farmers, you know, they're hard-working. They've had their, their, the, the natural disaster has struck. But actually, a, a bigger issue here, I reckon, is is the fact that Gareth Morgan wrote a really interesting article on no, this. It can't be. It we, was Gareth Morgan. Yeah, no, but well, he, he's absolutely right that, that farming is so based on the price of land rather than the money mm, you make mm, from actually mm. farming. That's a far greater risk to our farming sector. Well, OK, so that's farming. the other question, Cam, isn't it? Yeah, a farmer sitting on millions of dollars' worth of land, or possibly. The question is, should they get the doll? Well, here's the thing. They I think structure they... themselves in a, in a in a, as a business rather than individuals, um, you know, running running it as ma and pa. What they do is they go and form a company and they get all the benefits that flow from, from having the ability to front load things before tax comes out. Uh, they have all the benefits that are associated with GST, GST returns and, and the like. And then all of a sudden they get some hardship and what do the farmers do? They're always bleating. If it rains, there's too much water. If it's a drought, there's not enough water. If it snows, the lambs die. They're the ones yeah, who put Yeah, but the put all of that aside, though, Cam. The bigger issue here is that, that the whole basis of the business is based on something that's so risky. It's like the housing bubble. You well, know, the, the land price, dairy prices go up, land prices go up. Dairy prices go down. They're still the, paying their mortgage to Aussie just bankers. Just put it into simple terms, Josie, and, I, and we agree on this. Again, shock to the listeners, but we agree on this. What's happening is... Farmers take almost no money while they're working on the, on the land. They get to about 60, 65, decide that they want to cash up. So what they do is they put this arbitrary valuation on their land um, based on what they bought it for, uh, what they believe it's worth now. Then they sell it to their kids who then go and get a massive mortgage while the parents put their feet up. And it's, it's artificially raising the price of the land. You can't do that in cities because there's a value that there's an economic value that's attributed to that land on how much it can produce and the, and what you're now seeing is some farms are being valued far higher than what they actually produce. All right. Uh, we'll leave it there Cameron Slater and Joseph Bagani on the huddle. It's uh, now 9 to 6 Murray Deeker to follow.